Welcome. In this lesson, we'll learn Hess's law, which deals with reactions that happen in a sequence. If we add up all the enthalpies of each reaction in that sequence, we will get the enthalpy of the overall reaction. The magic part of Hess's law is that it's true even if our reactions don't happen in the exact order that we predict. In this lesson, first we'll learn how to manipulate a sequence of reactions to match the overall reaction. Then we can use the enthalpies of each reaction in our sequence to calculate the overall reaction enthalpy. In the next section, section 5.7, we'll combine our knowledge of Hess's law with something called formation reactions to unlock some powerful new abilities. Suppose two reactions happen in this sequence. First, in reaction one, A and B come together to form C. Then in reaction two, C decomposes into E and F. In other words, C is created in reaction one and used up in reaction two. If we add up all the reactants and all the products for these two reactions, we get the formula for the overall reaction. Notice that chemical C is both a reactant and a product. Since it's on both sides of the reaction equation, we can delete it, just as we did for spectator ions when writing net ionic reactions in chapter four. This reaction simplifies to A plus B forms E and F. Now, suppose we know the reaction enthalpies for reactions one and two. If we add those two reaction enthalpies together, we get the overall reaction enthalpy. This is called Hess's law. If we think of energy like money, then Hess's law is like adding up all the charges and returns on a receipt to get the total cost. Let's look at a more complicated sequence. Suppose we already know the overall reaction is 2A plus 2B forms X and Z, but we don't know the overall enthalpy of this reaction. Instead, we know the enthalpies of two reactions which involve a lot of the same chemicals. Can we use Hess's law to calculate the overall reaction enthalpy? This is sort of like a logic puzzle, and I like logic puzzles. Our goal is to construct the overall reaction in the box on the left by manipulating the individual reactions from the box on the right. There are many correct ways to get the answer, but the way I do it, I start by noticing that reaction one has an A and a B as a reactant, and my overall reaction needs two A's and two B's as reactants. So a good starting point is to double reaction one, which also doubles its enthalpy. Now that I've got my reactants looking good, 2A and 2B, I shift my attention to the products, X and Z. Well, reaction two has an X and a Z, but they're on the wrong side of the reaction. That's no problem for Hess. First, we'll just reverse reaction two, and it puts X and Z on the right side. Furthermore, now we have two Cs on each side of the equation, meaning that they cancel. This is great news since the overall reaction does not have any C's in it. Now that we've assembled our overall reaction for manipulating the reaction steps, we need to add together the enthalpies to get the overall enthalpy. We'll add two of enthalpy run to negative enthalpy two to get the final value of negative 90 kilojoules per mole. All right. Time for a practice. This one's got real chemistry in it. See if you can calculate the overall reaction enthalpy from the two given reactions on the box on the right. Pause the video and give it a try. Remember, there are often multiple ways to get the correct answer, but this is how I solve it. I first notice that I need an NO on the left side and half an N2 on the right side. Reaction B has both of these species, but it needs to be divided by two and flipped before the coefficients match. This manipulation causes the re enthalpy of reaction B to be multiplied by negative one half. Next, 
I see that if I add my manipulated reaction B to regular reaction A, then the unwanted O2 will cancel on both sides and the final result will be my target equation. The last step is to add the enthalpies together. When I do this, I get negative 373.3 kilojoules per mole.